Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an interesting concept that a few people miss when it comes to submarine and anti-submarine warfare. And that's the concept of using another ship to basically mask your acoustic presence. Now, we've talked about this concept a little while ago when we were doing some anti-submarine warfare, but I said, you know, this might be a good time to go ahead and bust out some of the actual features here and see just how effective this actually is. So let's go ahead and take a look at a little scenario here. Uh, we have two Oliver Hazard Perrys, which when I think of anti-submarine warfare, this is the one I think of. Thank you, Dangerous Waters. Great game if you've never had a chance to play it. And we also have, I'll pause for a second here, a total of three enemy submarines. Each one of these submarines has a slightly different situation going on for it. The first one is a uh, Delta-1. He's at relatively low depth here. Uh, we have another one. This one's going down to deep depth. He's down to 344 feet. And of course, we also have this one who's uh, not that deep at all. He's actually chilling at regular depth. Now, off of these three vessels are actually three civilian vessels, each one being a very large, which is one of, if you take a look at the actual size, this is literally how big these things are relative to the submarines, to give you an idea of just how absurdly large and how loud these things probably are. These are all moving at 10 knots, by the way. Our submarines are also at 10 knots, and like I said, they're going to different depths. So our two Oliver House Perrys are completely passive right now, and they're basically listening to the water and trying to hear what they can hear. Now, one thing I noticed immediately is we picked up this submarine instantly. This one was the uh, good old-fashioned, this is the SSBN. This is our one who's shallow with no masking. Notice the total distance here is, uh, let's call it about three nautical miles. I try to keep things tight here. This guy on the flip side has no knowledge whatsoever of those two submarines that are being masked by these ladder ships here. So as far as we're concerned, we don't even know there's two more submarines here. We only can see this one. But ah, what just happened? You can see our Oliver has a parry here has just detected one of the submarines right here. Now you're probably sitting here going, wait, 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 how can we pick him up? Ah, it's a line of sight issue. You can actually see that our Oliver has a parry can trace a line of sight through that submarine that does not pass close to these ships that are making all the noise. Whereas this Oliver Hazard Perry, unfortunately, is basically lined up perfectly. If I were to actually take him out of this scenario here, disable a sonar, this guy would actually have a very difficult time seeing it. Now, the next thing you're probably saying is, well, wait a minute, which one of the two submarines is this? Is this the one that's deep or is this the one that's shallow? Well, let's go take a look. Aha, exactly what you expected. This is the submarine that went to its maximum depth. So unfortunately, you have to think of three dimensions here. You know, if I were to pull out a Microsoft Paint real quickly here, excuse my little really, really nasty detail. This is my Oliver Hazard Perry. Boop, 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 boop. Put a little thing on the time, because why not? We have our ship that's blocking it. Again, this is uh, going to some Memphis Paint action here. This is um, a big old cargo ship here. You know exactly what it looks like. This is one of my submarines. And this is my deep submarine. Notice when this air ship is trying to detect this guy here, he has a very, very close range. Of, actually, if you take the actual angle here, this is a very, very tiny angle. Now, when you compare it to this one here, remember we're kind of 3D, we have a much greater angle. This angle is called the masking angle. And basically, as you'll notice, the deeper you go, the less effective the masking effect of another vessel is. So in this case, even though it's physically the same distance, this one we pick up because it has a greater difference between the actual source of the noise. Well, if you like my Microsoft Paint skills there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. So let's see how things evolve. So one thing I am going to do, though, is I'm going to order my two ships not to start doing its sinking thing, because as soon as they do the sinking thing, I think you know exactly what's going to happen afterwards. So I'm actually going to order them to hold fire at this time. Don't shoot unless I tell you to shoot. So here we go. We've immediately identified the one boomer. We've immediately identified the other boomer who passed into the masking angle. But notice the third boomer is completely invisible to us at this time. He's right there, and we still cannot pick up this boomer. It's just chilling. Okay, boomer, right? So we keep going, we keep going, we keep going. Notice we still have no knowledge. As a matter of fact, as we started to get physically closer to the source of the sound, we are actually masking ourselves from all the sound that comes around it which is why when you have um, vehicles that are going to be working in anti-submarine warfare, you don't want to put them near each other, otherwise they mask each other. So we're going to continue cruising, continue cruising. Notice we've lost both submarines at this point. Cruising along, cruising along. Look at how close these subs are to our Oliver Hazard Parry, who's completely clueless at this time. Meanwhile, that other sub, huh, we've been tracking, there he is. Now notice... We get so close to the two subs, we're finally able to acquire the one that is shallow versus the one that is deep. Now, if we wanted to be a real punk, we could do one of these kind of things and flip on the active sonar. Unfortunately, active sonar in games, at least this game, is not nearly as good as it is like when you're doing dangerous waters or something. But we were able to acquire this one pretty accurately. 
Hopefully we get just a little bit more, and bingo. Now we've got some very, very good information, both of these two subs. We immediately identify their depth. Of course, we're not sure in the depth on this one because he's a little shallower, but notice we had to get that physically close to be able to identify, I should say, be able to even get close enough to notice. The identification phase hasn't even taken place. Like, look at this. We won't be able to identify either of these subs until they basically cruise right underneath us. And we weren't able to identify that one. And we weren't able to identify that one either, which is a real problem in most scenarios because you do need to get a positive ID. So that just shows you how effective that masking technique can be. So of course, I, I feel bad that we haven't sunk the, the Jesus out of these guys. So I'll give you a couple of torpedoes. And you know what? I feel so left out. I'll give you a couple of torpedoes. You know what? You deserve a torpedo too. You know, you work really, really hard. So it's important to make sure that they feel very, very equally treasured as far as anti-submarine warfare situations are concerned. Now, ironically, one of these torpedoes will never be able to get deep enough to actually engage the submarine. We switched over to, oh, let's actually go do one of these, do one of these, do one of these. These are always super entertaining to watch because you'll see that the submarine, the torpedo basically shoots straight downwards. Eh, I think this guy's actually going to get tapped here. Oh, <laughs> notice it didn't even sink him. <laughs> That's always going to happen every single time. All right, now we're going to go ahead and order them to uh, go nuts. Let them have it. Now, of course, our guy is going to be reloading on that side of the ship, and he's going to come flipping around. He's got to pre-reset everything and get that all ready to go. Oh, he's still got a torpedo left. Can I borrow that torpedo for a second? Thank you. <laughs> hey, I didn't want to waste the torpedo. I mean, like, what's the point, right? Oh, this guy is so going to get caught by this thing. Going to have to do a whole video on submarine decoys one of these days, but I just thought this would be kind of a fun thing to do. Look at this one. I'm coming, I'm coming. Give me a second. Oh, swing and a miss. Let's grab this one again. Excuse you. Get back down there. He's right there. Like, he's right... You, 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 uh. That was a big explosion. All right, folks. Uh, hopefully this video is helpful. Like I said, that masking technique is wonderful. If you want to get a little old-fashioned with it, you could, like, try to, like, hide in the guy's wake with your snorkel poked up. But remember, if you have anything visible coming out of the submarine, out of the water, people are going to be able to see it, and it's going to completely eliminate the technique. Other than that, enjoy.